uh, my first fly that was accepted by Umpqua, if, uh, Jim Green Drake. Uh, Let's see here. Jig Green Drake. So this was the first fly that, uh, that was accepted by Umpqua. Uh, it was a pattern that uh, came to be um, uh, not, well, some of you may know this, but I was a Fly Fishing Team USA member for uh, four or five years. Um, I started competing in 2006 and um, just stopped competing uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago or so. Um, and this fly came to be because we were uh, had a competition on the Frying Pan River uh, over in Basalt. And um, it was really, really windy during the comp. And um, we needed some flies that could get down and anchor our smaller flies. Because uh, this comp was in April. So um, blueing olives, you know, some caddis. And um, we needed an anchor fly. And... Um, uh, to hold our to hold our flies down. So um, this is a fly that we came up with. We found that the green drake nymphs were moving quite a bit during that time. They weren't hatching or anything yet, but they were they were definitely active. And so this fly came to be because of that. Um, and so I'm going to start with some coke de leon for the tail, using olive thread. This is tied on a, a, a Umqua competition four fifth or a four hundred jig hook. Um, it's a great all-around jig hook, but you could tie it on a 450 or a, a, um, a Tiemco 403 BLJ. Um, I'm going to make the tail about uh, as long as the shank is. Only a few fibers. The thread I'm using is an Olive Dunn Uni thread, size 8 dot. I'm going to do one wrap underneath of those feathers just to help prop them up. Lower the camera. I'm trying to, guys. Let's see here. Let's see what I can do. There you go. Now you can't see my face, but that's all right. Um, for the ribbing, I'm going to use uh, gold wire, small. Yeah, no problem, guys. No problem. All right, so I'm gonna tie it in on the side of the hook. Uh, for the bead, I've got, uh, I'm tying this one a little bigger than what I would normally do it. Um, I, I, my favorite size for this is a size 14, um, uh, but a 10 and a 12 work pretty good. I'm tying it on a 10 right now, just so you guys can see it a little better um, on the camera. Um, yeah, I can't, unfortunately I can't. I can't get it in focus any more than what it is. I'm sorry, guys. Um, we'll have up on the Umqua YouTube channel, um, we're going to have uh, uh, this rebroadcast. And it's I've got a 50-50 split, so that way you guys can see me tying it, and you can also see the, uh, um, the fly up close as well. Oh, yeah, thanks, Antonio. Not seeing my face is a blessing. Luckily for you, you get to see it almost every day, and you'll get to see it tomorrow at the shop. <laughs> um, the dubbing blend that I use for this is uh, 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 it's a it's a blend that I do myself. It's Arizona Synthetic Peacock Dubbing, and I do it uh, with natural peacock and 50% light peacock. So I basically just take one package, and uh, yeah, thanks. You like that mermaid uh, 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 tussling? with a uh, with a gnome it's a great shirt those guys are immediate and really know what's going on um, it's a 50 50 blend that I do um, and uh, uh, I don't mix it up 100% complete because I really like uh, uh, really like the modeling that comes together uh, with with the two especially if I get a patch of light and a patch of dark Wrapping this forward, I'm going to build a pretty sharp 
taper to this because if you've ever seen Western Green Drake nymphs, they're really short and stocky. Oh, good point uh, on Facebook too. Yeah, we're, we're streaming it there on Facebook and I think they've got the, the split screen up on Facebook as well. And what most people would do actually is they would probably stop right here where I have um, and there's a gap right here in the in the fly. But because green drakes are so stocky, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna wrap this dubbing all the way to behind the bead. Then I'm gonna rib the fly. And one thing I do when I'm, when I'm tying is not a lot of people have caught this uh, onto this before, but I do a half hitch um, with my wire, then I don't have to cut it and I also uh, uh, don't really have to wind it down and then wiggle it back and forth. Um, when you do a half hitch with your wire, just pull it down tight and just break it right off. Saves your scissors. Um, and then what I'm gonna use for the, uh, the wing case is just some pearl braid back. Um, this is from Seabuy. Um, but uh, what we actually use uh, in the Umqua commercial pattern is um, flat diamond braid and, and root beer. Both of them work equally well. So I'm just going to tie that in right behind the bead. And I'm actually going to wrap that about halfway back down the hook shank. Because I really want this, this fly to be really stocky. And then I'm going to put on more dubbing and I'm going to cover up those wraps and then just pull it forward, tie it off. And then before I whip finish it, I don't know if you can see this very well, the guys on Facebook and YouTube can see it pretty good, but there's all these fibers that are, are sticking up. Um, at the end, I'm just going to add a little bit more dubbing um, and put that just to cover up those those fibers there. Yes, I do fish this Euro. Uh, however, um, it works great under an indicator too. If you want to drift with it under an indicator um, or uh, um, double nymph rig, usually this is my point fly. Um, however, when the um, uh, when the green drakes are really going on, um, you can fish two of them and uh, you'll catch doubles uh, with it. Uh, it's a great way to fish it's anywhere there's green drakes out west, um, but really on the, the Roaring Fork, the Frying Pan, um, the Gunnison, uh, the Rio Grande, um, uh, the East, they're all, all great, uh, great rivers on the Taylor even. Um, so I highly recommend if you're going to come out here and fish during green drake time, whether you're going to Euro fish or not, this is a great fly to have in your box, uh, for that time of year. I'm just going to grab my Tiemco whip finisher. I really like the mini, the midge. Whip finish it a couple times. And then I'm going to just add some, um, Wapsie fly tire Zement on top and, um, that's really just to uh, give that uh, wing case a little bit of uh, durability. And then that's it. Gonna East Taylor. Yeah, that's right. I don't. Um, I don't. I, it doesn't. It hasn't worked really well. Uh, I tried it up with a. Uh, uh, with hot spots on there, and I, I, I don't, I haven't had great success with it. Uh, success with it. Uh, for just for you guys out there that can't see the questions, um, um, Hootie Girl asked if I ever used a contrasting color for the final collar, um, and I don't know. So that's my jigged green Drake nymph. Really simple fly. Um, works with a black bead or a copper bead as well. Um, I don't tease it out. The fish will do that once you start catching them. Um, but, uh, but that's it. Um, the final story about this guy is during the session that I had on the frying pan, I ended up landing like 45 fish 
uh, in the three hour session that we had. So uh, if that says anything, uh, I don't know what else does, um, but that's my Jig Green Drake. Um, next we'll move on to this. This is another competition inspired fly. No, uh, the question, uh, no, Reed, I don't have to. Uh, the question is, um, do I have to use that kind of dubbing? You don't have to. Um, I just do because I like, I like the colors of it, the, the shades of olive with the, with the natural peacock color that, uh, um, uh, that come with that Arizona synthetic work really, really good. You could, you, I mean, you could use some trout hunter dubbing. You could use uh, any olive dubbing that you wanted to. Um, but I really like the, the way that those two colors come together when I blend them for the, for the final dub for this. <clears throat> so for my, uh, my plan C caddis, this is another competition inspired fly. And the reason it's called plan C, um, is because usually when I, when I would go to a competition and fish, um, we'd have practice days and, um, I would like to have you know, a dozen flies, if possible, maybe six or seven uh, flies that uh, when I would go into a session that I would, um, that I could have to rely on and fall back on. Well, the plan C caddis came about because it was my, my plan C, my plan A and plan B didn't work. Uh, this guy came about uh, um, because of that and it, it was my plan C and that's how the names kind of just stuck there. So I'm going to start, I usually tie this with a 2499 um, SPBL. Um, best sizes for it are 14 to 18. Um, it's a great, you can fish it Euro. Um, I fish it dry dropper a lot, um, but you can fish it under an indicator too. And one thing about this fly is um, a lot of people uh, think that what I'm going to put on here is the hot spot for the fly. And yes, it is, um, but this was really a diving caddis pattern. So the, this gold Zelon is uh, an egg sac. Um, so uh, I'm going to use uh, olive thread again. Um, but this is a size 14 that I'm tying right now with a size uh, 2.5 millimeter bead, gold. I'm just going to take this Zelon. If you guys watched Craig Matthews last uh, last night, uh, this is actually some of his Zelon. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this over because I want it to be a fairly big egg sac on here. So I'm going to I'm going to fold it over in a loop like this, and then when I tie it in, I'm just going to cut that loop and then get a double um, double thickness on here. I'm going to start my thread and the, the zeolon right behind the bead because I want to have a uniform body. All the beads I use are tungsten. Most of the time they're all slotted tungsten. Hi Tim from Idaho. Thanks for coming by. You can fish this caddis any time of year. Um, this one is great in the fall, but it also works equally well throughout the entire summer. Um, and you could also uh, um, um, change the, the egg sac color. So you could do a, a bright green one for the Mother's Day caddis if you wanted to. Um, um, but this one is a great, uh, great color that you could tie any size. Now the question was, what time of year would I fish this caddis? And you can fish it any time of year. Thanks, thanks, D. Dahmer. That was a great question. Okay, so there's no rib on this fly, actually. And um, the next, uh, the next part I'm going to tie in for the body is just some standard um, hairs ear dubbing. I really like wide gap hooks for this fly. Um, I don't remember if I said uh, what I'm actually tying it on. This is a, a Umpqua Competition 300. 
I'm gonna add a little bit more. This is gonna be a great fly to show you a couple tricks that I do with partridge as well. So I'm gonna stop it right about there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two CDC feathers and I'm gonna tie one in on each side and these are gonna be the, uh, the wing. And I want these wings, uh, I'm gonna tie, tie these in on the side with the con concave part out. So I'm gonna, if you can see it this way, I'm gonna put it on the side of the fly with the concave part out. Couple wraps to secure that. Do one on the other side in the same fashion. Oh, I wish it was a new one for Umqua. No, this is Elon tag, man. Um, uh, on my first trip back in 2015. I haven't taken it off since then. All right, I'm going to just trim those off. So now I've got the wings. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a little bit more hair's ear dubbing just to cover that up, but this is also going to serve as a dam for um, the partridge that I'm going to tie on next. So there's a couple ways that you can do this. I'm going to take one little partridge feather. Um, you could use um, brown hen or India hen if you wanted to, um, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to peel all the, the fibers back. And I'm going to expose that tip. I'm just going to reach in and I'm going to cut that tip out of there because I don't want it. I just want... Uh, I'm tying the... Uh, good question. Uh, I'm tying the, my Plan C caddis, um, uh, Grand River. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these... and I'm, I don't know how I can see this. There we go. I cut the knot of the, the tip. So instead of having to tie it in and palmer it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay that V right on top of the on top of the hook. I'm going to pinch it. I'm going to do two light wraps around. One, two, and then I'm just going to tighten it down. And it almost bends it like deer hair. So that way, uh, it palmers it around the hook, and I get a nice palmered partridge feather without having to mess with hackle pliers or tie it in and wrap it and, and uh, break it off or anything like that. I don't just cut off that butt section, and I don't need it anymore. All right. Must have dropped my... So two more steps in this fly. Just gonna take a strand of, uh, of crystal flash. This one strand, the color doesn't really matter. It's just there for the, the, to simulate the antenna. I'm gonna pull one strand, cut one half off, and then I'm gonna double it over. And I'll just have my two antennas going off the back. I'll trim those the length of the body, just to the egg sac there. And then I'll take some dark hairs here. So uh, for the person that uh, asked earlier if I contrast uh, contrasted colors on the final collar from my Jig Green Drake, no, but on this one I do. So I'm gonna put a darker head on it. So I'm just gonna use some darker hairs here dubbing. Behind the bead, whip finish. Oh, there's the finished Plan C caddis. Uh, Scott Flinch is asking a good question. Um, do you prefer tungsten bead heads because of the better sink or movement in the water? Um, Scott, I prefer tungsten because of the sink rate on the flies. Um, 
uh, when when competing, um, you don't get a chance to add split shot or anything to your um, your leader. So every all your weight has to be in the flies, and so I prefer tungsten because they get down much much faster. And then I don't have to use any lead weight behind the bead either to help give extra weight. Um, I could, um, but typically I don't need to. Yeah, thanks guys. I'm glad you're liking this fly. Um, sometimes, yes. Sometimes no. I can throw some on there. Uh, when I do, it's usually just super glue. I don't like head cement or the, I mean, the closest stuff to head cement I get is uh, this fly tire Z-Mint from Wopsy. It's great stuff if you haven't tried it before. I highly recommend it. All right. Here, I'll do this. That way you guys on can you guys can see it a little bit better. I'll move it up. Oh, it's not in focus. But there's some gist of what it uh, what it looks like up close. Uh, is this the fly to fish when seeing caddis shucks on the rocks? Um, anytime you see caddis flies in the air flying around, especially in the afternoon, it's a great time uh, to use this fly. Um, I also do a, an olive version. Um, it's got a, a hot orange uh, egg sac on it as well. Um, but uh, um, you can you can instead of using a natural hair's ear uh, for the for the body, you can use olive, and it works just as well. Uh, brand of super glue. Mine dries white. Max, um, Cam, I use Loctite, the brushable Loctite super glue. And it dries clear. So does this fly tire Z-Mint. It dries clear. That's usually what I what I uh, do with all my uh, Pertagons, um, is I use the, the Z-Mint or super glue. Um, thanks for asking. Okay, so the next fly I'm going to tie. Moving a little bit faster than what I wanted, but that's all right. Um... I'm going to tie uh, a fly that uh, has caught me more fish in lakes, um, just just about more fish than in lakes than uh, anything except for humongous. <laughs> um, uh, this is uh, my jigged Jolly Rancher, and the reason it's called that is because the trout uh, or any fish really uh, eat it like candy. So um, back to the jig hook. This is tied on a Tiemco 403 BLJ. You can tie it in size 12 to 16. Um, one of the keys to this fly is the chartreuse bead. Um, I was inspired by this fly from a lot of my friends in the UK. Um, it's really nothing more than an olive woolly bugger, but there's a couple of, of key elements to it that really make it stand out. One of them is the chartreuse bead. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, olive thread once again. I'm going to use olive done. Do I need a margarita? Yes, I need a margarita. I've got something better than a margarita though. Um... I really like select marabou feathers for all of the, uh, oh, I wish it was a beer. <laughs> for all the flies that I like feathers. Um, and what I'm going to do with this one, uh, one of the key, another key element for this fly is uh, uh, the long tail. This tail, for, the tail for this fly is about three times the length of the body. And this is Sculpin Olive uh, Marabou. So you can see here. Yep, whiskey and tying. It's a Balvini Peat Week, 14 year. So you can see how long this is. And that's how long I want it to be. So I'm going to take the butts of what I just trimmed off. 
I'm going to put those up right behind the bead. Now the tail's not going to stay that long, um, but uh, I'm, I am, what I do is I just come in and I pinch off the tips because most of the time I don't like, there we go. Tail is usually pretty sparse. I don't like it really big and buggy. Um, one of the next uh, key traits of this fly is the holographic flash about blue that I put on there and it's blue. Oh, it works great. Uh, the question uh, Jack Walker 406 is asking me, uh, um, is it good in lakes? It's good in lakes, but how, how about under a Euro rig on a dead drift? It is a great fly to do that with. I've got a couple other titles for you just to show you the color combinations that I do with it. Um, uh, but uh, I do a blank saber version, which is, um, um, is a great, uh, uh, great color to, to fish in rivers as well as lakes. But I'm going to do two, two strands of flash boot on each side, a blue flash. And I want those just to be as long as the tail is. So those are a little long. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim those off. Um, Scott Flinch is asking, uh, what Euro nymphing rod and reel outfits are you currently running? Uh, Scott, I fish the Sage ESN. Um, I have for a long, pretty much since it came out, um, Gen 1. Uh, before that, before we had Euro nymphing rods, when we were all trying to figure this out before YouTube videos and books and everything else, um, my Euro nymphing rod was a 10 foot four weight uh, Z axis. Um, but uh, but currently I'm running uh, the 10 foot three weight Sage ESN uh, HD, um, fantastic rod. Um, for the reel, I just pick a reel that balances the rod. Um, right now my the um, uh, is a, a Lampson, um, gosh almighty, Velocity. It's an old Velocity, Gen 1 Velocity that I'm, uh, that I'm using. Uh, just a number two. It balances the rod perfect. And, um, uh, I really like it a lot. It's got a great drag in it. And I've had that reel for probably almost 20 years now. A long time. It's great, great reel. Um, as far as lines go, I don't use Euro nymphing lines uh, anymore. I did when I was competing because it was a rule that I had to have those. Um, and don't, mainly because I'm not competing. So I can just fish uh, a long, uh, long leader. So my leader really is about 60 feet of 25 pound test and then I taper that down. Do I use worms? I don't use worms. I don't use worms. Yeah, no problem, Scott. Thanks for the question. Okay, so now you can see the uh, the blue flash and the olive marabou together. It's such a good color combination. Um, I'm also going to use this marabou to uh, to rib the fly with. So I'm going to cut one more strand. If I could find blue holographic sulky, I would probably use that instead, just because it's a little more durable since it's an embroidery thread. Come back here. Um, for, the, uh, for the body on this guy, um, I tie it with a bunch of different, uh, pretty much straight mono, yeah. Uh, pretty much straight mono. <laughs> no worms, chug that whiskey. I'll have another sip. A special bottle man I can't uh, I can't uh, can't chug it power bait back in the day um, this dubbing is uh, is bronze Arizona synthetic peacock um, 
you notice in uh, a theme here, I really like that dubbing a lot. John Romer is a great, great guy, um, and uh, his materials are fantastic, so I, I highly recommend them. Um, but for like for the for the black version, um, I use this. You could use olive ice dub if you wanted to. Uh, no, Charlie, I don't use squirmies that often. Uh, I'm not a fan of them. I've got a ton of squirmy material downstairs in the basement, but uh, I don't I don't fish them that much. Maybe in high water and when it's muddy, I would uh, squirmy, but I would probably pick a Vladi worm over a squirmy. Um, but if you've noticed, also, I haven't tied in my hackle yet. I'm going to tie that in right behind the bead. And what I'm using for the hackle here is um, is olive grizzly hen, just a Metz olive hen. So I'm going to strip off all the, the fluff at the bottom because I don't need it. Tie that in, and I'm going to fold this the the stem back over itself, right there, just to help lock that in place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do two turns right behind the eye, or right behind the bead, and then two turns down the hook. I've got hackle pliers, but I'm too lazy to pull them out and use them. Let's get to the bass stuff. If I've got time at the end, Jim, I'll tie some bass stuff for you. Actually, I know, I know a good fly I could tie for you. Just got to make sure I got the hook up here. All right, we're almost done. Done. Just one more little bit of dubbing to cover up the uh, right behind the bead, and that's it. And this is the Jig Jolly Rancher. Um, one of the guys that I work with uh, at Front Range Anglers, um, for those of you that don't know, I'm the e-commerce and social media manager at the shop there. I also do a bunch of hosted trips for him to Christmas Island, New Zealand, um, uh, Soaring Eagle Lodge down in New Mexico. Um, one of the guys I work with, I showed him this fly, and he fishes up in Wyoming a lot. And um, he... He tries not to fish this fly, but then he ends up fishing this fly. And he's caught everything on it. Largemouth, bluegill, perch, walleye, catfish, rounds, rainbows, cutthroats, you name it. If it swims, it will eat this. Um, it's a great, great pattern. Um, and the reason why I tie on jig hook is when you're fishing in a lake, it, it's, I mean, kind of the same reason that you would tie, tie so, uh, tied flies uh, regular nymphs on a jig hook um, is when it sinks uh, think of how a crappie jig I, I grew up in southern Missouri so I fished when I first started fishing um, I fished for bluegill and bass and crappie and catfish um, and that's what I fished with with a fly rod starting out um, and I wasn't I was 18 when I caught my first trout on a, on a, on a fly rod um, but I always thought you know what Fishing trout in lakes is really no different than fishing crappie jigs for crappie or bluegill. So why not tie a trout fly on a jig? And that's how it, that's how the jig came about. Um, it, it works great. It, you always hook the fish right in the upper lip or in the in the roof of the mouth, and um, uh, you can control them a lot better and fight them a lot harder and get them into the net a lot quicker. So um, tie a few of these guys up and uh, uh, let me know what you think. Um, R. Harris is asking me, um, do you experience a lot of misses due to the long tail? Uh, no, I don't. Um, this fly is, uh, this is a size 14. Oh, I forgot to trim this guy off. Whoops. Um, 
and I don't this, this the, t the tail when it when it gets wet is so sparse um, that it, it that it doesn't affect the, the hookup ratio at all. Would it fish well without a high bis bead? Yeah, it fishes great with a with a gold bead. Um, I haven't I, I've only tied it and fished it in gold and and silver, or gold and chartreuse. Sorry. Is there a creel to go with the story? Is, is there a creel? Is there a story to go with the creel? Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, that creel is, uh, I mean, not a, a, great, a great story, I guess. Um, but that was from uh, uh, my wife when uh, when we got married. It was at our wedding, and people put um, some uh, suggestions for dates and that kind of stuff in the. Uh, 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 in there, so it's it's full of suggestions for dates and other stuff. The rod is actually a 1928 Leonard. Um, so it was actually given to me, um, and uh, I, I'm obviously not going to fish it. I can't fish it because both of the tips are shattered. But it was given to me, and um, since I can't fish it, I thought it would be a great uh, piece for the mantle. Um, and I know you guys can't see it too well, but, um, it's a, the painting up there is actually a brook trout. Um, and Brent, I don't know what the, I can't remember what the F code for that, uh, bead is. I've got it on the bag that it came in. Um, but I don't remember anymore. I wish I, I wish I did. I should know. Um, how large of a bead do I have tied with? This is, on this size 14, um, this is a, a 2.8 millimeter. Nice tie. Thanks. Love the hot bead. Thanks. Thanks, Wes. Hi, Jim from Scotland. Got a lot of friends from over there. Quite a few, actually. I, uh, in 2016... Um, I was the team manager for the uh, for the Scottish fly fishing team when they came over for the world championships. Can you tie this with deer fur? I don't know. Maybe. So that's the Jig Jolly Rancher. Um, let's see here. I don't have any eyes. Up here, I hadn't planned on tying any bass stuff, Jim. Horse feathers. <laughs> you could rib it with horse tail, I guess. <laughs> oh, you guys are cracking me up. Um, I am going to do a saltwater fly, though. Um, this is not an Umqua signature fly yet. I haven't submitted it yet, but I'm going to tie it anyway because it's treated so well on my trips to Christmas Island. Keep it trout. Okay, I'll do one saltwater fly, and then I'll go to trout. Go back to trout stuff. <laughs> yeah, we need to go bass fish soon, man. Um, I'm seeing a bunch of reports from all my friends at home that the the whites and wipers and stripers are all running, and uh, the morels are popping, and uh, it's making me jealous. Uh, it's making me jealous that I can't be there to go fish right now. Um, so this guy is called the chromatic crab, and um, the hook that I'm going to tie the on, tie this on um, the Tiemco hook is a 764. Um, the thread I'm using for this is just a Danville. Um, Flymaster, I think Flymaster, yeah, Flymaster Fly Plus 210, brown, tan. <clears throat> what I'm going to do, um, one of the key characteristics of this fly I borrowed from my buddy Alec Gerbeck, um, who I'm sure you guys all have heard of, who works for, uh, um, for Amqua. I wanted something simpler to tie than his Al 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 flexo crab, so I came up with this. And let me tell you, the triggers and bonefish 
and blue fins and pretty much anything that I have cast it to in the salt loves it. Um, so I'm going to start with some, uh, uh, some brass black nickel eyes. Um, let's see here. I saw another question. Um, forgive me just a second. I saw somebody ask a question earlier. How long did it, uh, Brando Calpician asked, how long did I say my leader was? Well, it really depends. Um, the leader that's on my rod right now, there's probably 40 feet of straight 25 pound Maxima Chameleon. Um, then I taper that down with a section of about three feet of 15 pound. And then I go right to my cider. And my cider is the biggest bi cider that Umqua makes and it's O3OX. But my cider is literally only this long. It's a foot long, that's it. And then I tie a perfection loop into the end of that and I will tie my tippet material right into the perfection loop of the clinch knot. And then the tippet material I, I fish is, is generally, uh, depending on the depth of the water, uh, maybe three feet to my first fly and then 20. So, I mean, close to, I don't know, 35 or 40 feet, my leader. Oh, thanks. Thank you, men's 81. My main body material. Uh, Logan, uh, what for, for what fly? Here's an interesting tip. Uh, I actually used to work for Umqua for a good number of years. And when I worked for Umqua, uh, my buddy Brian Schmidt, who used to be the fly manager there, taught me the proper way to tie on eyes, and I learned that most people tie their eyes on wrong. For the crab, I'm getting to that in just a second. I do dropper. Uh, I tie my flies on droppers, Espy. Um, the, the question was, do I use the dropper and or point fly or I bend a hook? I don't do, uh, maybe if, when I was guiding, I did a lot of truck and trailer uh, bend of hook to the eye, um, but uh, I don't, um, I don't do that much anymore. Unless I need, unless I need to quickly, um, if I'm fishing a single dry fly, I need to quickly put on a, on a uh, dropper, then I'll do that. But usually, other than that, I don't. Um, I don't tie many crab patterns, actually. This is pretty much the only one I tie. I've been spoiled in my life. I've only fished the salt. Well, I fished Florida once last year. I was there for a wedding and fished for some snook. Um, but I've only fished the salt at Christmas Island. So I've been really, really lucky. And I don't know, they might. Trout and chili do, because technically a pancora is a crab. So, yeah, I guess they do. So, now that I've got my double eyes on there, I borrowed the hot orange from, uh, from my buddy Alec. Thank you, Alec. What I'm going to do is, uh, I've already pre-tied these, uh, these clay. I just make them out of micro chenille. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down on between have the the hot eyes right there um, split split the claws oh, that's a good question the eye method I I, uh, I assume Larry that you're asking about how to tie on dumbbell eyes properly um, I wish I had a better way to them. it cross wraps are fine but most people don't turn the hook over and do cross wraps underneath. What you really want to do, you don't want to have a whole lot of space. Uh, I, I don't want, I want one little layer of thread underneath of the eyes. And then I, I'm going to do my X wraps, but you really need to fill in the space. 
a lot of people just do a couple of X wraps and go around the bottom and then put super glue on it and that's good. Well, super glue breaks. You really need to make sure the eyes are on there tight before you even apply any super glue. So when you're, when you're putting on the eyes, it's imperative that you put pressure on all the time and pull in everywhere when you are putting on the eyes. You want to fill in all those gaps so there's no place for the, uh, the eyes to move. And then they will end up being movable on the hook shank. So I'm going to use the the uh, the eyes to split the crab claws. I'm just going to figurate those on. So what what this does is it help give some bulk to those arms, gives them some muscles. Derek, my name is Randy Hanner, and um, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch. I do live streaming like this on Twitch, even though I know it's for video games, but it's a great place to go to be able to uh, um, live stream on there and, and YouTube, uh, all at Sovereign Piscator. Cornbread, the name of the first fly that I tied was my Jigged Green Drake. Um... All right, I've got to uh, speed this fly up a little bit left, and I really need to keep this at an hour. Um, body material, now that we're almost done, um, is EP uh, Foxy Brush. This is the light uh, sand color. And this is the inch and a half brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie this in on top of the hook, obviously. And I'm going to go up the shank a little bit. I'm not even going to put any eyes on this, but I'm going up the shank to help give it a little more body, like just around the bend. So you can see that I've gone up the bend of the hook there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back down, flip it over, and I'm going to take these perfect barred gold and bronze um, legs. Four of them. And then I'm going to flip them upside down so that way the... Oh, I'm going to time it on top. Just do a couple of figure eight to lock those in right on top of the bronze or the the brass eyes just like that and I'm going to stretch this out pull those fibers forward at close to the back And that's that. Let me get my other scissors here. I'm just going to cover those up. Cover that, bend that wire back over itself so that helps keep it in place. Whip finish. And then just because this is a salt fly, I am going to um, super glue it. I have a pretty inconsistent schedule on Twitch right now. Uh, the question is, Reed, uh, Reed Whitlock asked me when I, when I stream on Twitch. And I have a pretty inconsistent schedule right now, but I try to do it on Sunday mornings or Sunday afternoons. So this, guys, is the my chromatic crab. Um... Like I said, I fish it. it. Its main purpose is to fish for triggers down at Christmas Island. Um, but I'm sure it would work anywhere. Um, it is a fantastic fly to fish down there. And it's simple to tie. When I get going, I can whip these suckers out in a couple... 
Um, and I've got nine minutes left. I don't have time to tie another fly, I don't think. But if you guys have any questions, I am more than happy to, uh, to ask, um, no matter what it is. Um, trout flies, salt flies, um, bass flies. But I really appreciate everybody uh, coming out to watch. It's been a lot of fun tying so far. Um, I wish I could do it for longer than an hour. Uh, but uh, if you if you come follow me uh, um, on Twitch, follow me on Instagram and uh, on Facebook. Because whenever I do uh, my live streams on Twitch and stuff, I uh, I announce them on there. Um, I have a website too, sovereignpiscator.com. Um, feel free to uh, visit me there. Um, What's a new hook I've had fun tying with? Um, man, really, a, a new hook that I've had fun tying with has been um, the uh, the Fasna um, small jig hooks. Those have been a lot of fun. Um, but one one uh, Tiemco hook that I've had a lot of uh, a lot of fun playing with is the the two two six BL the Caddis uh, emerger hook. I only, okay, a lot of questions coming in now. That's awesome. <laughs> um, the Insta is, my in, uh, my Instagram is Sovereign Piscator, S-O-V-E-R-E-I-G-N, Piscator, P-I-S-C-A-T-O-R. Uh, my Twitch account is the same, at Sovereign Piscator. I'm actually streaming live on Twitch right now. Um, yeah, definitely tie some Jolly Ranchers up. Saltwater or freshwater flies? Man, I really loved tying freshwater flies until I fish, started fishing the salt, and now all I want to tie is big stuff. But I still tie a lot of freshwater flies, too, with all the travels that I do. Uh, I tie a lot of freshwater stuff, especially to New Zealand. Thanks, thanks, Espy. I appreciate that. The color of Zelon is, uh, uh, oh, what does he call it? It's gold. Um, here it is again. I want to say it's Caddis Gold. I only use natural CDC. The question is, what, what color CDC do I use? I only use natural. I don't use dyed stuff. Uh, main reason being is when they dye the uh, CDC, they have to bleach it first which kills all the natural oils and then they dye it a color um, and dry it out. So I don't, uh, I'm not a fan of using dyed CDC. I only use natural. The hair material and the fly. Are you, uh, uh, Oviha, are you talking about this crab that I did? Uh, if you're talking about that, the hair material that I used for this is a EP uh, Foxy brush. It's like the cream or the tan color. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, cream or sand. Uh, my name is Randy Hanner. Um, Reed Whitlock. Thanks, everybody, for coming. What's my best, uh, my best hybrid striper fly? Oh, that's a great question, Henry. Um, I've got a fly that I call the Strip and Shad that I, uh, um, that I tie... Uh, usually in smaller sizes, the, the shad that we get down in Missouri, so I'm pretty sure that you get on Lanier as well. Um, but I tie it out of strictly laser dub. I'll do a, a straight um, uh, craft fur uh, in the middle for a spine, and then I'll do like gray or uh, um, black on top and then white on the bottom and glue some eyes on it and uh it's a great fly that i that i use to uh to fish for them i wish i would have had time to tie it today um but unfortunately i ran out um it's it's not so dissimilar from uh from a couple of flies that you tie for fishing at lanier yeah wes thanks thanks for tuning in i really appreciate it i know a lot of the other guys do too Yeah, no problem, Cam. I'm glad to uh, glad to do it. 
favorite flight attire for New Zealand um, is a, a, a kiwi beetle or some, some nymphs that I really like to tie down there are just really simple uh, thread-bodied thread -bodied flies. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, uh, I've, got a, I've got a YouTube video for my kiwi beetle. You should check it out. It's a great, great fly. Um, I host New Zealand trips. Uh, I host all of my trips out of Front Range Anglers. Um, I'm an e-commerce and social media manager there. Um, and where do we go to? We go to uh, River Haven Lodge. It's in Murchison, New Zealand. Highly recommend Scotty and Leah. They're fantastic. Uh, what's my go-to dry fly for prospecting in dry dropper rigs? Uh, any kind of caddis. Um, Uh, thanks for tuning in, Antonio. No, uh, Ice Fisher, is the brush pulled over the fly, the eyes, or is it palmered? It is pulled over the eyes. So I just I tie it in and I fold it over the top just like you would a wing case. Um, do I sell these flies? Uh, I, I don't sell them on my website yet, um, but uh, they're, they, they're available at your local Umqua dealer. They should be able to uh, tell them which flies you want, and they should be able to get them. Uh, the Jig Green Drake, the Plan C Caddis, and the Jig Jolly Rancher. No problem, Jim. Cheers. Uh, thanks, video. Or, thanks, video by Steven. I appreciate it. Um, what, uh, what do I catch with this fly? Um, my main fly, the main fish that I'm going for with this, uh, with this, uh, chromatic crab is trigger fish. It's gone, Derek. It's gone, buddy. Nothing left. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, again, I will, uh, looks like my time's coming to an end. I only got a couple minutes left. Um, but if you guys have any questions or, uh, or anything, feel free to reach out. Um, <laughs> about time. <laughs> and feel free to follow me. I, I love getting new followers, and you can follow on along on a lot of my adventures. Um, lastly, before I forget, it's almost time to, uh, to quit. I really wanted to... Um, to plug the tire for tomorrow, Walter Newman. Um, also, if you will schedule of tires, um, click on the link in bio for the, um, at the um, for the merchant's Instagram that you're watching me on here, and that'll give you the full list of tires. Um, thanks again, guys. I really appreciate it, and um, uh, hope to see you guys on the water. Thanks.